My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and a very warm welcome back to Transport Fever 2. I hope you all had a good Christmas and got to, you know, relax, spend time with friends and family. Well, yeah, I hope you all had a good time and you all had a, a nice Christmas period there. We are now back with Transport Fever 2 in the little, um, that little lull we have every year between Christmas and New Year where no one is quite sure what to do at least that's how i feel every every time we hit this point in the year you know you have to go back to work but you really don't want to but you know the days between boxing day uh, as it's called in the uk and the bank holiday we have for new year's day you just kind of like nobody wants to do anything but you've got to do something if if, if if you know what i mean or maybe it's just me who feels that way anyway yeah i hope we all had a great time um so here we are, we're in, we're in Axbridge today, as you can see from the station signs. And we're in, well, what is a very busy Axbridge, actually. We've got about 140 people waiting at this station. And bearing in mind we only have one service running on the main line, the, the Flying Scotsman we set up back in episode 13, that's quite impressive. So we are going to have to think about having multiple trains running our main line in the not-too-distant future. However, I'd rather finish the main line first of all, get our passengers access all the way up into the city of Epping and it sounds like here comes a Scotsman now there she goes wonderful wonderful train never ever tire of seeing that beautiful locomotive uh, yeah I imagine she's got a full load actually let's have a look yep 68 how much are you gonna make them with a full load actually out of curiosity 1.2 million oh that's wonderful uh, so yeah as we said Axbridge a lot of people here uh, so they're not all going to fit onto this one train, of course, but that's okay. We can start adding more trains a little bit later. As I said, first of all, what we want to do is start finishing. Start finishing? That sounds fine. Uh, yeah, we want to get a, get a wiggle on finishing our passenger line, don't we? Get into Epping, and then we can look at getting extra services and maybe setting up some local community services as well. Now, what I've done between episodes, and I bet you I can't find it, is it over near Hearn Bay? Yeah, here we go, look. I've gone on the Steam Workshop and I've downloaded quite a lot of assets, uh, mods and assets, um, just so we can do some, whether we do it on screen or off screen, but just do some detailing work around the map. So, as you can see here, I've managed to find some old, old castle, some ruined castle sort of assets and buildings, and I've just put together a little what would be perhaps a, a, a Norman fort set, situated on a hillside here overlooking the uh, the town of Hearn Bay, good view of the river, got a nice wide vantage point around which is obviously where they would put their, their castles and their lookouts so yeah and another idea I've had is there is a, uh, a mod which I'm sure a lot of you are aware of called is it, it's either People Magneteer or Pleb magnet here and what you can do is you can put down a uh, a little something a little bit of one asset i think it's usually like a lamppost or like a an invisible whatever it might be but a small asset that serves as a way for the game to generate people who want to go there it's basically what they used to get people to go in and out of the various buildings in your towns and cities so basically you can build a a structure and make it demand that people want to go and visit so what I was thinking is we've only got four cities on this map and it would be nice to have a couple of local services around the place so my thoughts was using the the assets and the mods is in some of these areas out in the countryside you know a fair distance maybe like here for example we could put or we could build using roads and assets a little village and in that village we could put one of those uh, people magnets that cause uh, that creates a demand so the residents want to go there and we could give them a little train station couldn't we with just a small local line that pops into these various villages we could put around and about just to liven things up a little bit now you you, you won't be able to give them or make them generate a cargo requirement so they wouldn't need fuel and bricks and so on and so forth but it does mean that people want to travel there 
so we wouldn't be able to make money off our freight which is fine because that would be a little bit too too cheaty but we could certainly make it so the people want to go there and that'll just give us the excuse to put in some local commuter lines some stopping services that you know wiggle around the map and just do something a little bit different from our main line which is very much back to back to point to point isn't it so yeah, it's just an idea i had i'd be curious to hear your thoughts about that and let me know i hope i've explained that well enough uh, if you do know what i mean uh, you, you know what i'm getting at here then let me know if you think it's something we should do and if it is shall we do it together uh, during an episode or would you prefer me to do all the the you know the background work off camera so building the roads and putting in the various buildings to create a village and then setting up the the pled magneteers uh, off camera and then we can do the the infrastructure link so we could do the commuters local rural services with our trains on camera so yeah let me know what you think about that anyway let's get on with today so we need to get from Axbridge to our final city Epping up here at the northern northern end of our map if we have a look at uh, look at Epping a quick look at Epping we can see the residential district is on the northern side of Epping and on the southern side we have all the commercial buildings and of course the industrial buildings so I'm thinking we're gonna to want to put our passenger station in this area on the southern end of the map that will combat the noise pollution or limit the noise pollution exposure to our residents as much as we possibly can and then we just run the line from Axbridge here over into Epping now our station at Axbridge we have elevated it. It's, I think we're up at about 60, 62 meters if memory serves. Let's have a quick look. Let's verify that so we know where we are. So height of the cursor, yes, yeah, 60 meters. So if we're at 60 meters here, obviously we have a shallow depression here between this hillside where our station is and this hillside right here. I wouldn't really call it a valley per se, but I suppose you could call it a valley. So we don't want to be losing any height here, but we also want to think about bridges because we don't just want massive great bridges all over the map. It just looks a little bit odd. An occasional large bridge is fine, but having them everywhere, it just makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. So yeah, we want to make sure we're not losing too much elevation because as you can see, we then have another shallow depression between this hillside and this final hillside. And at this point, the land after this hill doesn't really fall away too much. And this is quite elevated here. Let's see how elevated it is. Look at that, 100 meters. So essentially, we need to gain 40 meters of height between Axbridge and Epping. And we want to do it in such a way that looks natural and normal and blends in nicely. And as I said, it isn't just a great big bridge going from point A to point B with some normal tracks as we navigate this hillside and then point B to point C which again we'd switch them to normal tracks as we get to this elevated land here at about 90 100 meters so what I'm thinking is first of all there's no two ways about it as we depart Epping because of this fall away here and this climb up here this will have to be a large bridge which is fine because what we could do is we could you know make it as if it's a historical you know one of those feats of engineering that the uh, Victorians did and obviously it's got modern track and catena on it now but there's nothing to say that modern engineers didn't get their teeth stuck into it and bring the bridge up to modern standards so what we want to do then, like yeah, if we did something like that, as you can see, I've got some new bridge types available. The reason I've done this is I really, really, really do like the default bridge, wherever it is. Well, there's a default stone bridge. Is that the one? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I like the default bridge. However, it's too slow. 56 miles an hour for a high speed passenger service or what could potentially be carrying a high speed passenger service in the future just doesn't cut it however the, uh, the faster bridge 
just doesn't quite have the same aesthetic appeal to it. It's got the speed ish 112 it's not as good as 186 but it's still decent enough but it just doesn't look as pleasant and yeah you, you can't call that a marvel of victorian ingenuity because well it's not a victorian style bridge at all so what we can do instead is using some of these mod modded bridges that we have available is do something maybe like this so that's 140 miles per hour so it's faster than the stone viaduct. Uh, I can't remember what the iron bridge speed is, but it must, I think it's there or thereabouts. And it just looks, if we like look from a distance, maybe like on if we sat on this road here, this climb up to the station, that looks a lot better. And that, well, that would, I imagine in reality, if this was a real thing, it would be a bit of a, a, a tourist attraction. So I think we're going to do something like that. Now, what we're going to do then, so we're going to span over this initial, again, we'll, we'll call it a valley, at the same height as the station. Like so, that's curving. We don't want to curve, we want to keep you straight. There we go. So we've got over the first valley. And despite saying I don't want huge bridges jumping from place to place to place, yeah, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want another one here to here, for example. This one here, I can live with it, because you can excuse that and you can come up with some background story behind this. And it would be, like I said, a big tourist attraction. You'd, you know, people would come and walk around down here. They'd take photos of it. They'd stand up against it, look it up, and all that good stuff that you do when you you see a massive structure. So having one huge bridge on this line, I can accept that. So we'll double track this one, like that. And obviously this would be called the Axe Bridge. Well, there you go, Axe Bridge. And here's the Axe Bridge Bridge. A lot of bridges there, but it just fits, doesn't it? You know, it, it, we can excuse it, you can justify it. Anyway. It's there now, we're sticking with it. So what we're going to do here is, I guess we'll just tunnel through this hillside here. Now, we were at 60 metres, so we must still be about 60. We want to start heading upwards, don't we? Can we head up at a 2.5% gradient? Yep, that'll get us to 67 metres. Do we have any other... No, we don't have any other tunnel type, so we're sticking with the default vanilla tunnels, but that's okay. So if we now start climbing upwards, so we've gone from a bridge that would be one of the wonders of the Victorian age to what is likely going to be quite a lengthy tunnel here because I imagine we're still quite submerged. Oh no, we're not too bad. Yeah, we'll we'll actually break out the next time we run some track out. I thought this was going to go all the way up to here, for example. So yeah, never mind. I was going to say we've got a huge engineering feat in terms of the bridge and then a huge engineering feat in terms of the tunnel. But we haven't. We've just got what will be a regular run-of-the-mill tunnel, actually. Here we go. Look, we've emerged out, out into daylight already. So, yeah, let's keep on climbing. Our slope... Shall we go for 2% now? Just start taking the slope off a little bit. Look, we're at 78 metres. So we've only got to find another... What's that? 22 metres to get up to around about 100, which is where we were outside of Epping. So that should be quite easily doable. Do we want to have another tunnel there? Or would we be better doing a cutting and blending it? I think we'd be better doing a cutting and blending. So if we can get to 90 meters here. There we go. What's our speed? Let's maintain our speed. It's 186, isn't it? The max on high speed tracks. Yep. Yeah. Did that create a little tunnel? No, it didn't. It was a shadow. <laughs> Idiot. No, that's not a tunnel. That's a tree's shadow. Well done. Anyway, yeah, so... We're now climbing upwards, and we're doing a, a reasonable gradient, but not something that's going to overburden the trains. Now, the question is, how do we get over these... this freight line here? Because we can't go straight across. It won't let us do that. Because we're gonna, we must be at a similar height. Yeah. 
So we're going to have to think about this. So that's not going to work. Well, what we could do... Let's just take this back to about... Not there. Yeah, there. And let's think about this then, because we need to take into account we need to get over this. Now, we already have a tunnel on our freight line, so we should be able to just build over the top of that if we can get enough height elevation in enough time. So we're going to have to curve a little stronger while still maintaining as high speed we can. And what elevation? Oh, that's 7.5%. We don't want that gradient. Not at all. Let's go for... Well, we had... We were going at about 2.5, weren't we? Can we do 2.5 again? Yeah. And do we want a bridge... Sorry, do we want a tunnel? No, we don't. We'll go for the cutting here. So we're just going to eat into the side of this mountain. Well, it's not, it's not a mountain, is it? It's, it's a hill. It's a big hill. Let's get rid of those two stretches of track there. Must have missed those. And now if we head over that way. Now, again, it's given us a very, very high gradient there. Could we get that to 3%? Uh, I don't think we're going to do it. Let me just see what will happen here. No. Collision. Collision, okay. Right. Let's have a think about this then. I'm deleting trees there, not the track. That's better. Come on, delete. There we go. Let's take that back to there. Any more trap? Ooh, a tiny, tiny bit. So basically, what we're hoping to achieve here is this. That's what we're wanting to do. Now, ooh, that's 118 meters. That's quite, that's quite high. I don't think we're going to be able to do that. Now, that's put a bit of a, a bit of a cat amongst the pigeons there. Because what are we at here? Let's see, 74. What we'll have to do then is come up here. Can we do it at three and a half at three percent? Will that give us enough time to get to where we need to be? Okay, right, let's try some yeah, let's try let's just rework this bit here. That's not working out. Okay, let's go from here. And let's have this curve through the hillside, through the mountain side, if you will. A little bit more aggressively and let's get that to two and a half percent there 2.6 percent is fine can we get 150 that's that's fast enough I think especially when we have the high-speed Express trains yeah they're gonna have to slow down there but you know I, I do believe trains do slow down in tunnels anyway in reality so that it makes sense it's not beyond the the realms of feasibility for a train to have to slow down as it enters that tunnel. Now can we come up a little higher, say 3%? Yes, this is looking better. And a 3% gradient is more than manageable in Transport Fever 2, so yeah, we'll go for that. I mean, we could have just done a high 7.5% gradient and had no problem, but I wanted to keep it a little bit more lifelike, if, if you will, if you follow me. Now, will you allow me to do this with a cutting without pissing about with the, the tunnel below? No. Yes, yes you will. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. How low can we get you without it starting to cry about the freight line? Yeah, there we go, 106 metres. I think that's as much as we're going to do. That really is just resting on top of the tunnel there, isn't it? It would be. But hey, if the game says it's fine, it's not colliding, then we can take it. 176 is fine. It's not as fast as it could be, but it's fast enough. There we go. Yeah, that really is nestled right on top of... The, you can probably see the brickwork underneath the railway sleepers there, to be honest, but there you go. So, anyway, the main thing is we've got to where we need to be. We're at the right sort of elevation. Right, so now we can put our station building in, in the city of Epping. So, UK Generic Passenger Station... We want blue trim. We'll have a medium-sized building. 
we want three platforms and tracks for the starting station 320 meters the long canopy and high speed tracks and let's give you a spin and if we put you somewhere like that yes we might have to just take this back just just a bit to say there and nope that's the wrong thing we want tracks and then what are you doing here how are you in terms of your elevation versus the, the station you're i bet you're elevated aren't you yes you are you're elevated well that's fine because we can just have you do this like that and then you're not really elevated anymore because we see here 105 meters ah, that just didn't quite line up but that's fine because what we can do is just take it back to say there and connect this in like that and is that nice is that it's not straight of course because it's on a curve but is it looking okay i think it is i think we can live with that and there we go major construction works finished we are now into the town of epping although we do still have to do the second track and the the switch point as we enter the station but that's fine and oh yeah bugger it's the wrong side of the tracks right okay we go again let's take it back to there there's always one foul up there we go that's better and you come in to there wonderful that is connected yep that's all happy everybody's parallel and playing nice yes they are so well be oh it's got a bit of a kick out there hasn't it look at that yeah we're gonna have to do something about that so we go again hopefully for the final time let's go back to here if we can avoid the tracks kicking out like that then everybody you know all the better how's that i don't think that's kicking out anymore that looks a lot a lot of a lot smoother of an approach into the station yeah let's let's get down here and have a look yeah that's better isn't it yeah a lot better we don't want that weird little kick out it was doing so yes now we're coming in left hand drive of course it's a uk themed map what do we have here don't need you so we need to if we want to use platform number one in epping which logically we would want to we want to get over onto that platform so let's come back away from the station and let's give this a nice high speed crossing point let's go one two five there we go so our trains can get over into platform one as they then leave platform one they're already on the left hand side so they'll just carry straight on using the tracks rather than the cross point so yep yeah, that's fine so we'll need some signals along all of this of course so let's do just that so it's all going to be one way so we'll have a signal there that's obviously controlling your entry into the station in fact let's change that for we can get just the signal there yeah there we go can we get the same style but a four aspect let's see that's three aspect that's three aspect so we'll yeah we'll go for a three aspect double pole whatever that means yeah we'll have one of them there so again that's controlling your entry into the station and then We'll just put some block signals and we'll change these then to a different style just to mix it up. That's the that's the wrong side. There we go. And we'll try and get these to sit level with one another across the tracks. Like that. And then we'll switch it up and we'll go for this style just here. And we'll put one just on this, this radius as we approach the tunnel. Hello, Mr. Bear. How are you doing? Uh, like that why not and da, 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 
Uh, let's go for a two aspect offset. In fact, no, let's go for a dwarf signal. We're entering a tunnel. It would make sense to have dwarf signals in the tunnels. Where's the signal there? There we go. And then we'll have one just on approach to the bridge. The Axe Bridge Viaduct. There we go. And we don't need any switching points here because we're doing northbound, southbound traffic. And what the heck is going on in Axbridge? 393 people. Give me a minute. Bloody hell. That's a vet. How are the other stations doing? Out of curiosity. Hearn Bay. 139 heading to Long Eaton. 27. 27. That's, that's a thing. 27 into Axbridge. And in Long Eaton, 210. Uh, the majority of which are heading to Axbridge. Okay. Well, where is our train? Where are you? Let's see if we can spot you as we're doing our, our flyover here. You must be up there. Axbridge, there you are, heading into Axbridge. Of course, you're going to be fully loaded because look at this, the uh, passenger numbers. There's no way you wouldn't be. Yeah, that's fine. So now then, what we can do... Well, we, yeah, we, well, we can, but it's silly to do it now. I'll say we could extend the main line all the way to Epping Station. Not Epping Annex, let's just rename that. There we go. But instead what we need to do is, of course, get a way for our passengers to get in and out of the station with as minimal fuss as possible. So then, we'll have a bus lane on this road. A... that's not level. That's also not level. There we go, that's what we were looking for. How does that look? Yeah, that's what we want. That's not. Bloody hell. That's really not what we want. Yeah, there we go. And we'll have you... Come around into there. And you can go into there. Okay, that's all good. Let's go. Ooh, what do we have here? Oh, these are obviously must be added with some of the mods. Some new style bus stops. Uh, I guess the, these are German. Looking at the uh, guessing by the language here, yeah, what does that look like? That looks like an Anderson shelter. What about that one? That looks okay. Quite like that one. And that one? No, that looks like a corrugated shed. Let's try it. Let's go for that one to mix it up. So we want a bus stop just in front of the station. And da, 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 da. we just want a, a relatively simple setup here. So let's have a bus stop there. That serves the eastern part of Epping. We want to put the in the residential area there. And then we'll come down this way. And we'll have one there. And I think that's all we need for now, just to get the ball rolling. So, new line. So, colour. Let's go for... Let's go for a nice green. And you are coming up into there. And then across to the residential stop. And down into the southern stop. And there's very little interaction between our delivery service and our buses and we're certainly not going to get stuck behind each other at any of the drop-off points so that's that's good and this will be B for bus and this will be the Epping station loop nice and simple we should have a delivery building a delivery building a depot and we do it's just down here so Passenger, Daimler. We'll start with four. I think that's what we've been getting there or thereabouts on our other station loops. Colour them and assign them. So now we can extend the main line. So then, let's see. Where is our main line? Bloody hell. 300. That's a lot of people. I guess you're all going to Long Eaton, primarily. Yeah. By a long way. Anyway, main line. Manage this line. So we are now heading from Axbridge. We're heading out of Axbridge. 
into Epping and then you're heading back down this way and we want you to call in at Axbridge once again but on platform number five and then you're coming down and you're heading to Hearn Bay already and then finally back to your starting point here in Long Eaton. Why are you unhappy? What's wrong? No path. What do you mean you've got? Oh, is it? Oh, I bet you're in. Are you in Axbridge there? No, you're in Hearn Bay. So, what's your problem? Do you just need a stop go? Yeah, there you go. You're all happy now. Sometimes does that. Uh, usually, when the, the, the trains happen to be at a station, is what I find to be the, the most common time they get scared and they need a bit of hand holding to remember. Oh, no, I am okay. But yeah, there we go. Uh, oh, we want to duplicate this train, don't we? We absolutely do. It's, it's the, the service is absolutely chock a block at the minute. So let's just go ahead and duplicate it, and we'll have two. It's not going to keep up with the demand that we have at the moment, but we certainly don't want to oversaturate. Oh my life! It's getting worse. Just don't look at it. Just, just move away. Let's go and look at Epping. That's nice. Look at that. No station crowding. Nothing. That's beautiful. Right, so the last thing we'll do here is just do a little bit of... That, wow, that's massive. It must be a mod. Yeah, a little bit of smoothing of the landscape just where these roads and station buildings are, where it causes the ground to lip up a little bit. That looks better. Just makes it look a little bit smoother in transition. You can... Just run along this bit here as well. Keep the ground smooth enough off the side to our tracks. There, like that. Yeah, that's, that's better. That's nice. Uh, we don't need to do it here. But what we might need to do, I noticed, is just this little bit here. If we can get it without messing everything up. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that's where we'll leave it for today then, I think, ladies and gentlemen. What should we get on board today? Well, what, what train do we have here? Let's have a little ride out to the, to the sawmill and back. It's not a long journey. Yeah, let's hop on this from the freight exchange to the sawmill, and then we'll come back. So there we go, that's a main line completed. We're all the way from Long Eaton to Epping. We have a line that runs through all the cities. We'll sort out some local services and express services a little bit later i'm thinking long eaton to axbridge definitely needs an express service looking at the the passenger numbers on those two cities so we can we can do that that's fine and as i said at the start of the episode there's also the possibility of creating our own little villages and tourist attractions where people would want to go where we could set up some small slow local services off of our main line out to some manually created villages and the likes it is possible to do it it takes a while but you can do it uh, i'd like to hear your thoughts about that whether it's something we should do or we should just stick to what we've got basically i don't think it's cheating because like i said yes you'll make money off of the passengers that you drop off of course but passenger money is never it's never going to make or break your company ordinarily it's the freight where you're making big money and you can't get freight goods into there so it's not cheating as much as it could be shall we say but yeah hope you've enjoyed the episode ladies and gentlemen as i said i hope you've had a great christmas and looking forward to the uh, to the new year i'll try and get another video up between now and new year so hopefully that will uh, get done but for now hope you've enjoyed if you have please consider hitting that like button on the uh, video there down below it really does help and of course if you haven't yet subscribed then you you want to keep up to date with future video releases and hit that subscribe button as well but for now ladies and gentlemen as we enter long eaton sawmill all that remains for me to say is as always take very good care of yourselves it's tata for now